Hey guys, how's it going? So today we are working in kind of this new little area we're creating out in the cut flower garden. I want it to feel a little bit like a secret garden, a little bit like a maze for the kids, just with a lot of interesting things going on. I did show you this spot in a previous video. Uh, it wasn't quite set up yet. In fact, it was, it was close, but uh, we have to finish the irrigation setup today. Now, if by the end of the day, we have irrigation set up, corn planted, sunflowers planted, and zinnias planted, I will be happy. I don't know that we're gonna get that far though. So this spot right here, this is the same area where we've just planted all the tomatoes. So there's 21 tomatoes right in there. And we've put up a ranch panel fence, which you won't see for very long, but it serves as a really good, well, trellis for vining crops, but also a really good staking system for sunflowers, which is what I'm gonna plant. That's my plan to plant sunflowers along the whole border and create a room in here. And then you'll notice that we have L shape. This one was up in the previous video. So there's an L shape right here that sits five feet away on this side. And then it sits six feet away from the back here. I'm gonna plant another row of sunflowers, millet, some taller things, amaranth. Uh, in fact, some of the amaranth might end up back here because it is pretty tall. Anyway, I wanna create a little bit of a maze back here. So since that previous video, Paul did get this second one up. In fact, it looks like he's just finished it this morning. And then right in here, we're gonna go get some bricks and we're gonna create like a little bricked in square area where we're gonna plant corn, which will provide another vertical interest and another little pathway in here. Standing up front at the entrance, you'll notice that we did not bring the fencing over this way because we are gonna plant a double row of zinnias. One row, the back row will be the ones that are 40 to 50 inches tall and one row is the short. So it'll kind of create a living wall or a living fence right there to kind of block in the rest of the area. We're gonna grow some fun vines on this trellis right here and probably add some stepping stones. But as you walk through, the goal will be to either turn left you know, you won't really be able to see the stuff back in here because we're gonna have so many layers. We're gonna plant a couple of vine crops right in here. And then you can either go in that pathway or the one around the corn, or you can walk all the way back and go, it's just gonna be fun. There's lots of different directions you'll be able to go in the end. The first step is figuring out the irrigation in this space. And I've just got a menagerie of stuff going on here. I've got our half inch black supply line right here. I've got, the uh, drip tube, this one has emitter holes every 12 inches. I don't think I'm gonna use that though because I would rather use our drip tape which has emitter holes every six inches. You can run this a lot further. It's much more efficient and a lot less wasteful. So I'd rather figure out a way to get this to as many of the areas as possible. We've got all of our drip supplies here. You know, we've shared our organization system with you before. So yeah, I think that's gonna be the better part of today is just figuring out how we're gonna run everything and make sure that there's no tubes over pathways. So there's no tripping hazard, all of that sort of business. Um, you will see that I'm wearing sandals today because this area was tilled. We tilled in a bunch of grass clippings and leaves thinking we were probably just gonna use it as a vine crop area again. And then we just decided to go ahead with this kind of idea. Anyway, I'm wearing sandals because it's so fluffy. The dirt is so fluffy and it just fills up my shoes. So I figured sandals would probably be a little bit easier <laughs> while I'm tromping around in here. So I'm just gonna set up a camera. I'm gonna try to figure this thing out in as timely a fashion as possible. And then I will walk you through and show you how it's all gonna work.
almost done, you guys. All I have to do is run some drip tape in the corn beds, which are looking so cute. In fact, this whole area, I can just envision what it's gonna look like now that there's drip everywhere. Uh, but we do have a storm heading our direction. So I do think I'm gonna get rained out eventually. So I'm gonna try to get the drip done in here. Then we'll probably tackle the planting tomorrow. Oh, this is gonna be so good, you guys. Going in, you guys. Holy moly. All right guys, it's actually three days later. So I got rained out when I was just finishing up the irrigation and then it rained for two solid days and it was windy the third day. So today is supposed to be a high of 71. It's gorgeous, there's no breeze. It's just a beautiful, beautiful day. And having that three day period between when I set those brick beds up and now, it gave me a chance to kind of rethink where I'm gonna put the corn. I was gonna plant just blocks of corn in those and then I got to thinking that they would kind of block the view a little bit. Like I want some height so it feels like a, a maze to the kids, but not so high that we can't see the things behind it, on the fences behind it. I wanna kind of have them in layers a little bit, a little bit strategic so we can see those colors and those flowers. So I'm gonna take those brick raised beds a different direction and I'm gonna plant the corn on one of the fence sections because every year I end up having to stake up our corn because it's just so darn windy out here. Even when I have it planted in blocks, it just, it all topples over. So I think just planting it along one of these ranch panels to where I can lash them up as they grow, it'll be just less of a pain because I won't have to come along later and set up a staking system. So I've got a bunch of beautiful things back here. You can see I've got these black iron containers that I grabbed from beside the flower shed. I was gonna use them there, but they were too small. I think it would be beautiful to center those in these beds. I'm gonna flip the drip tape out, fill it up with a little bit of raised bed mix, possibly like put some pavers or something to raise these up a little bit. And then I've got some really pretty flowers. So these are maverick coral geraniums. I started from seed. I thought they were gonna be a lot lighter than this, but they'll be fun in this area, nice and bright. We've got rockin' deep purple salvia to go with them along with some luscious citron lantana, which is a fairly new one. And then I've got some uh, coconut appeal thumbergia I'm gonna plant on one of the fence sections. I've got some bunny tails grass that I started from seed. There are 72 of them right here. Look at that, they're in six packs. So we may use some in this area. And then I have just got a tub full of seeds. There's sunflowers, corn, more zinnias that we didn't get planted the other day. We've got nasturtiums, marigolds, gourds, pumpkins, just a bunch of fun stuff. And look at the difference in soil. So like the other day it was just so powdery and now it's got some moisture in it and it's nice and crumbly but not gummy. It's awesome. So this is kind of the perfect seed planting situation. We have tested all the water too. Everything works. Nothing's blowing off the enders. That's always a good idea to try before you get everything set in your space. Turn on your irrigation because it's inevitable. The drip tape is a little bit hard to get on the couplers so usually I have a couple of them blow off so it's good to get those repaired fixed tightened up before I get my seeds planted because if they blow off after I plant my seeds it can really kind of disrupt that area and then I usually have to replant also there's quite a bit of construction noise coming from right there at the moment so I don't know how much of that you can hear we are going to come along today and tie up some twine on the arbor uh, probably like attaching some down here and then maybe making a little bit of a grid so that our vines have an easier time. I've got ruby moon and silver moon hyacinth bean seeds to plant right here. And then I think the rest, like I've got the cup and saucer vines, I've got uh, butterfly peas and then the thumbergia. I think I'm gonna plant on the fence section. So I think 
Maybe I'll do the coconut appeal over here along with some ruby moon. That would be really, really pretty. But I think we might tackle this area first. So I'm gonna flip the drip tape just out of the bed and prep it. So I'll bring in some raised bed mix just to create a nice little bit of a raised area. And then we'll get our pot situated, planted, and then we'll plant some things around it, some seeds around it. Okay, so I'm gonna do my best just capturing everything that I get done out here. And then in the end, we will walk through and just check it all out. <laughs>
right guys, it is a new day. This project is taking a little bit longer than I had anticipated as many projects do, especially ones where you're having to run irrigation. That is what's taking me the longest because I wanted to make sure that everything I put in this space had some sort of drip irrigation to it. I always do our first watering by hand because I like to make sure everything's settled in nicely. Um, and drip irrigation is very targeted to the roots of the plants. It doesn't really get, most of the time, it doesn't do like full coverage. So it doesn't settle things very well. So anyway, I go, went through with a hose when I was all done, watered everything in, and then there is drip run to everything in this space. And things are looking fairly similar to when we started. I mean, with the addition of the Savannah urns in our brick squares, which I love. This is gonna be a fun, whimsical area, but there's still gonna be structure. And I think that that's what makes it work for me. I've got the two iron urns that are planted, uh, the two Savannah urns that are planted, a bistro set up there, and then just tons of seeds in the ground. Now it's not 100% done. I ran out of time last night. I wanna add two more containers uh, with some buried treasure pink strawberries, even though just a few steps away I have 90 strawberry plants in the ground but I think that that will add a little bit of a whimsical touch in this space and we need to plant underneath the savannah urns in the brick squares because I just I ran out of time last night so I did bring out these black iron urns to go in the brick squares but they were just too small I thought they looked better out here and the savannah urns were much more appropriately scaled to be back there they create much more of a statement. I should also mention that I had intended on planting corn in those squares and then I got to thinking about the fact that the whole point of having the ranch panels up were to have a staking system in place for our sunflowers and corn, which both of those crops fall down every single year out here. Whether I plant them in a block, no matter what I do, I have to add a staking system mid-season. So I thought, well, I'll just put it up now so that, and I think I explained that already maybe in the beginning, but there's no staking system in these squares. I could add something, but I went ahead and just incorporated the corn on the fence panels so that it's just done. And then uh, did make room for some pretty stuff in here. So anyway, in these urns, we have got an unplugged purple, deep purple salvia. I love this plant. The calyx are just this deep, deep, deep plum. And then this is more of a bright purple. They're just a gorgeous plant. And then we've got luscious citron lantana, which is a newish is it new this year or next year? Anyway, it's a newish annual, beautiful bright color. And then you guys, I brought out the Maverick coral geraniums that I started from seed and I just couldn't do it. So I used these salmon colored ones. I thought the Maverick coral were gonna be much more softer in color and they are almost orange. I brought them out here and I just thought, nope, my eye is gonna go straight to that orange, that bright orange color. Every time I look out here, I need something a little bit softer. And this is just a beautiful color blend right here. So coconut appeal right here, which are the white flowers with the black throat, they grow like crazy, like crazy, you guys. <laughs> like I honestly don't even think I needed to plant the ruby moon hyacinth beans, which are gonna be beautiful because they mirror the color of that salvia. I did tie off twine. So on the bottom here, there's just an X right here. There's a menagerie of twine. And then this one as well. I did not do the top ones. I'll probably do that once the vines get a little taller. And in all honesty, I just didn't want to go get a ladder. <laughs> I was at the point of the day where I was just like, you know what, I'm just going to do what I can reach and I will address the rest later. And then right up here, we've got our two rows of zinnias, which I did end up mixing the varieties. So we do have the tall ones in the back, which are a mix of, I think, three different Benary's giant zinnias and then a creamy yellow dahlia flowering zinnia. And then the front is a mix of profusion, varieties and Magellan varieties, so much shorter. I just decided to mix all the varieties together because I thought it would just be a little bit more of a fun look rather than trying to keep each variety color blocked and together in the same space. Because really that's not what it's about out here for me. I do that in some areas just to keep things, I guess, a little bit more organized, but we can cut these zinnias just as well as we can cut them if they were color blocked. So it is morning and I'm casting a nice long shadow, but you can see the view from the entryway here underneath the arbor. Now imagine we've got all the sunflowers around the whole perimeter. And I started with shorter varieties, so like four to five footers. Well, right here where there's a gap, I planted sunspots, which get about three feet. Um, so they're gonna just bridge that gap. And then once the fence started in, uh, also because there's no staking system, they don't really need it. So I figured that that would be all right. So five to six footers that go along to the very back. And then I did all of the really tall varieties, like the eight foot varieties. I didn't do any of the mammoths back here 
not yet. I'm gonna have to add another fence layer behind this to do our large gray striped or mammoth uh, sunflowers and our amaranth because I just kind of ran out of room. So beyond the back sunflower wall, there will be a wall of amaranth and those large sunflowers. So the big tall ones will create a really nice screen, I think, and it'll just make this space feel like a room. And then same thing on this side, started in with a little bit taller varieties and then they graduate down to the five to six footers. So you can see right on the left-hand side and on the right-hand side, there are three white tags. I ended up being able to fit three pumpkin vines per side. So right here, we have Casparita, which is a white one, Cinnamon Girl, which is a medium, orange one, a smaller vine, super productive, and then one called Wolf. And those are the great big orange ones with the super thick stems. I'm really excited about that. And then on this side, we've got Howden. I did two hills of Howdens right here because they produce like the jack-o'-lantern classic pumpkins. They're usually a really heavy producer. And then we've got a Jack B. Little, so little orange ones. So I focused mainly on classic looking pumpkins um, in a variety of shapes. So we've got orange in small, medium, and large, and then one white one that's just a nice little uh, it's a small uh, size pumpkin perfect for the kids okay so walking through our arbor here you can see the bistro set doesn't that fit perfectly I love it and it'll probably move around I thought you know we could even tuck it like right over here but this is where I want to add another pot on either side so our second um, paneling here we can just cap that with a pot with strawberries now there's corn planted all along both of these L shapes. And Benjamin did help me with that and had a great time. And for the corn, I only planted the front side of the fence. In two weeks, I'm gonna plant the back side of the fence. Um, that way we have a successive crop of corn and that way once the first one kind of starts to peter out, we'll have a little bit more time with that corn looking fresh out of the back rows. Same with some of the sunflowers. So I did a bunch of the pro cut so pro cut white night pro cut white light i'll show you um, but they are a single stem sunflower and they're pretty quick to grow so i thought you know if i did the interior i planted the interior of the fence with those in two weeks i'm going to plant the exterior of the fence with those so that i can have successive blooms from those as well and you guys these brick squares turned out so fun they're just dry stacked they're not perfect i didn't even worry about leveling them up or anything like that i just wanted it to be a fun just a fun project. So we've got the irrigation originating in a box over there. I went ahead and ran a half inch black supply line around the whole perimeter of the space. And then I was able to tap into it and spider off. Let me hop back here. So it originates right here. This is where it goes down into the ground and hooks into our system right there. And then it just goes around the perimeter and I just tapped in for our drip tape just in random spots. So I've got two right here that run both sides of this back fence. And I've got one that runs this fence line right here. There's grass growing there. So I didn't run a drip line on the other side because you can see it's staying moist enough. And then right back here along the back fence line, I tapped in with another half inch black supply line right there. And then just trenched a little, just a little trench. It only goes a few inches under the ground. And then it pops back up. And then I did the very same thing. So I tapped into that for this drip tape right there and I had to kind of do a menagerie. So the black supply line comes up and elbows over so that it could then go underneath the ground again and it pops up in the brick raised bed right there. And then it does have drip tape running off of it to feed this fence line. And then over here, I tapped off of the half inch supply line and again, trenched over, popped it back up for the pumpkins right here. And I also was able to tap into it right here with quarter inch to bring a line up for this container. Cause you know, when we planted these, this one had drip because this is already all run, but this one didn't yet. So we had to water it by hand until now. So the supply line stops right there. I've got drip tape for the zinnias. And on this back row, I went ahead and just added a, an elbow. There's elbows for drip tape and ran up the length of the arbor and stopped it there. So now for this, again, the line comes underneath the soil. It pops up right in here and then it runs the back of this brick square and I just tapped into it with drip tape and ran it that way and then I did come underneath the brick and popped it up here and ended it and ran one more line of drip tape right here because it seemed quite wide when I finished it I thought well this is perfect I could plant a little something fun right along the edge the edges of these beds I also ended up having to cut the middle one because I had decided after the fact to put containers in here so I cut the middle one and ended it here and then on this run right here 
It starts, goes to the end, and then elbows, elbows again, and comes up and meets the pot again. I'm actually surprised it worked out as well as it did. I mean, so far. So far, everything is working. It's all on one zone. Uh, when I initially started, I thought I was gonna be using the uh, brown drip tubing with emitter holes every 18 inches, kind of like we do in flower beds, but that spacing just does not work for crops. It's way too far apart. We would have to run that zone for a long time to have full coverage uh, for things that need to be spaced. You know, most things need six inches. Sunflowers, six to 12 inches. Corn, usually four to six inches. So it's perfect because I can plant seeds right at emitter holes, which is so efficient. So I decided I wanted to water everything in this space with drip tape except for the pumpkin vines which have individual emitters run to each like where i planted the seeds okay now let's take a look at this mix of plants because oh my goodness aren't these beautiful so i took the pack them in approach these are pretty big the diameter but i used a lot of plants it's going to be beautiful they're going to need quite consistent fertilizer because these are really productive plants but you know, I did pack these full one summer when these pots were up at our old entrance up there and they were glorious. I used cannas in that case as well. So these are toucan coral. I used three of them in here. And then I mirrored the dark purple salvia right here, rock and deep purple. There's three of those. And then I used a new osteo out for 2023. This one, we will put the tag on the screen because I don't have a tag with me. And I can't remember, it's bright lights, is it sunset? I don't know, they're gorgeous. They kind of start this apricot color and mauvey pink and then graduate down to a purple, which I thought would be beautiful to pair like with this Violet Night uh, Lobularia and the Salvia. And then we've got um, Super Bell's Plum in here. We've got Sweet Caroline Sweetheart Lime. We've got a new Super Tunia, the Midnight, right here, deep purple. And then a Raven Ipomia, Sweet Potato Vine. And there's the second one right there, both the same both the same mix and I planted them the same, like I mirrored them to where the like sweet potato vines were both on the interior of the pot and so on and so forth. So the last thing is to plant these up right here, which, you know, I'm gonna keep this stuff a little bit lower so that we can still see the containers and they can look almost elevated in these containers or being lifted up by whatever's planted below. And then we need to plant the drip tape right on either side of the beds and then the two strawberry pots, which will end the rows of corn on either side. Other than that, we are gonna mulch this whole area, probably with the same kind of um, wood chippy looking mulch that we used in the other uh, quadrants where they're not planted. We usually come in and top dress with land and sea where we have planted things. Um, it kind of helps us visually <laughs> indicate where things are planted, seeds are planted, so we can make sure to you know stay off of them. Because right now this area is so open and there's no seedlings up that it would be really easy to step in areas where seeds are. And the kids and I might make some stepping stones to come in through this area, but it's just going to be so fun. Uh, and Benjamin kind of was in and out yesterday. He was really only interested in planting corn. He might be interested in when we when we plant the strawberry but I will make sure to update you guys on what we end up planting. I'll probably do it in a video for you, what we plant underneath the urns. My mom's actually pulling in right now because we are heading to Boise to go antiquing. So anyway, I'm gonna stop the video right here. You guys, so fun to have this area done. I have a feeling that this is going to be my favorite spot in our entire garden. <laughs> It's always funny what ends up being the, like the most fun and the, the really beautiful part about this is like the ranch panels, the tea posts, the bricks, the arbor even, the pots. I had everything on hand. I didn't have to go buy anything. You know, throughout the years you kind of gather up this, like these pieces that you really love and you will retire them for a little while. Like the arbor we didn't use last year, uh, but we're using it this year. The iron urns. I think I used them at Christmas time at the flower shed with a little tree in them, but I don't think I used them prior to that for a year. I don't know. It's just fun to have like a little stockpile of things that you've gathered that you really, really love. You know, every year I do go through and I um, give away things that I don't find myself either inspired to use anymore or things that I think somebody else, there's a hummingbird on the salvia. What? Oh, it's flying that way. How fun is that? I've been noticing more hummingbird activity this year in particular. Oh, this is awesome. Already my favorite space. Um, anyway, I don't know what I was talking about when I got distracted, but thank you guys for watching. I'm super excited to show you the progression of this space as the season goes on. And thank you so much for watching this video and we will see you in the next one. Bye.